Hi there everyone. This video is a follow-up to a previous video that I've done on ESC testing with an inertial dynamometer. So if you've seen part one of this video, you'll know that I tested BL Heli 32 and AM32 ESCs using my inertial dyno and found some really strange behavior from BL Heli 32. I'll put a link down in the video description to that video so that if you haven't seen it yet, you can go and watch that video. In this video, we're going to be looking at some updates to BL Heli 32, some test code, and see how that performs. And we're also going to be comparing a bunch of different ESC firmwares. BL Heli S, BlueJay, BL Heli 32, FetTech, and AM32 to see how all these different ESC firmwares stack up against each other when we're looking at inertial dyno testing. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Let's start off with a quick recap of what an inertial dyno is, in case that first video isn't fresh in your mind. An inertial dyno consists of a large flywheel coupled to the motor, and that motor is connected to the ESC. We command the ESC to accelerate the motor as fast as it can at a certain throttle setting. In this test, I'm going to be using 50% throttle and we measure the torque that the motor is exerting on the flywheel using these load cells, and we measure the RPM of the motor using an optical tape. At the same time, we can measure the voltage and the current that's being delivered to the ESC, and that gives us a complete picture of how the ESC is performing as it's accelerating this flywheel. And all of that data is really useful to compare the performance of different ESCs and to try and improve ESC and motor performance as well. All the tests that you'll see today were using these test settings. A 50% throttle ramp from 3000 RPM up to 20,000 RPM, 24K PWM frequency or 24K to buy RPM if it's supported, and medium timing, so 15 to 16 degrees. All the other settings are left at default. So let's take a look now at some data from the test stand. And we're going to start by looking at BL Heli 32 versus AM32. So BL Heli 32.9 is this orange curve. That's the latest official version. And this is the behavior that I saw in the first video where we have this low and wiggly torque curve as the motor accelerates. And then only at quite high RPMs does everything smooth out and we start getting uh, the kind of shape of torque curve that we would expect. If we compare that to AM32, AM32, the torque curve is smooth. It, it gradually builds up to a peak value that's much higher than what we get with 32.9, and then again, gradually decreases as RPMs build up. But throughout the RPM range, AM32 is delivering more torque than BL Heli 32, except in this very low RPM region here, where Typically, we're not very concerned about torque at this very low RPM because when the motor is trying to accelerate to a higher RPM, it gets out of this range very, very quickly. I've been working with the BL Heli 32 devs on this, and this gray line is a test code which I've been testing for them, which has back EMF filtering disabled. Now, back EMF filtering is potentially required to deal with when the commutation frequency of the motor and the PWM frequency align. Obviously, we're using 24K to buy RPM, so that's never going to happen. The PWM frequency is always going to stay away from the commutation frequency of the motor. So we disable back EMF filtering because we don't need it anymore, and we see a huge improvement in this peak torque. We still see this sort of wiggly section at the start, and this may be due to the low RPM power protection. We don't want to draw too much current and try and deliver too much torque at very low RPMs because we run the risk of smoking the motor out or getting desyncs and things like that. So it would be nice to smooth this out, and I'm going to keep working on that with the devs and see if it's possible to smooth that out. But we've seen a big improvement already with the, with the test code. And if you're interested in keeping track of how this is progressing, there's a link to the uh, GitHub issue down in the video description. If we now add FetTech into the mix, you can see that it behaves a little bit differently. 
Firstly, you can't start the dyno pool at 3000 RPM with Effectec ESC. It just errors out. It detects, I guess, a stalled motor or something like that, and it won't drive it. So I had to increase the starting RPM for the test up to about 8000 RPM to get it to reliably um, drive the motor. And you can see that the Fettec ESC drives up to kind of moderately high torque values. It's sort of somewhere between 32.9 and AM32 in the test code. And then that torque kind of stays relatively constant until we get up to um, this line here, which represents the, the sort of torque RPM curve of the motor itself. And we see then that that decreases gradually down. It's interesting that the uh, BL Heli 32 and AM32, they still are delivering more torque at very high RPMs than FETTEC. And this is something that I've noticed about FETTEC is there does seem to be something to do with RPM going on with the, with the FETTEC ESC because it will consistently drive up to a certain RPM at a certain throttle setting. So maybe at a certain throttle setting, there's some sort of maximum RPM um, that it's happy to drive up to on that throttle setting. Uh, and so we see it dropping down and actually it will, it'll hit zero much sooner than BL Heli 32 or AM32. So I think that's a feature of the, the ESC firmware. Let's look now at the current consumption for all of these different firmwares as they're driving the motor. So we'll start with the BL Heli 32.9 official release. Um, that has some spikes and dips in current consumption at very low RPMs. Um, it's hard to know what's causing that. It's not very consistent between tests. If we compare that to the, the test code though, it doesn't seem to have any of those uh, sharp dips and spikes. So it may have something to do with the back EMF filtering uh, and that removing that, that back EMF filtering deals with some of these dips and spikes. AM32 is very consistent in its current consumption. It spikes up and then it's uh, a nice smooth decay as the RPMs build up. BL Heli32 consumes a little bit less current than AM32 across most of the RPM range. And that makes sense because if we, if we jump back to the previous slide, we can see that it actually produces a little bit less torque as well. So less torque, but also less current, that, that sort of makes sense. The FATTEC ESC consumes even a bit less current than um, the AM32 again, but it's actually producing about the same amount of torque. So the FATTEC ESC is a little bit more efficient here in terms of the amount of torque that it's able to generate compared to the amount of current that it's actually consuming. So that's interesting to note as well. I don't think that this will make an enormous amount of difference. These, these gaps here get very, very small at the highest RPMs. And that's typically where we're gonna be operating with a prop. So the differences here are, are probably pretty marginal. But it is interesting to see that it is a little bit more efficient at those lower RPMs in terms of the amount of current that it's consuming for the amount of torque that it's generating. Let's look now at BL Heli S versus Blue J. And this is really interesting because a lot of us aren't running 32 bit ESCs on a lot of our quads, especially smaller micros, we tend to be running BL Heli S or Blue J. And these ESC firmwares perform pretty differently to the 32 bit ESC firmwares we looked at on the previous slide. Let's start with BL Heli S. The ESC smoothly ramps up to a relatively modest torque level as the RPMs build up. And then at some point, I think the ESC decides that it no longer is in sort of low RPM power protection mode or anything like that. And it jumps up to the maximum torque that it's able to generate and then smoothly decays with uh, the RPMs building on the motor as we would expect. Blue J behaves really differently. It has this really quantized steppy torque response that is really consistent between tests. And it's, it's really interesting to me. I'm going to raise an issue on the, the GitHub and see if we can look into what might be causing that. At these low RPMs, this first step here seems to be uh, to do with low RPM power protection again. We don't want to demand too much torque from the motor at very low RPMs because we could draw too much current, overheat the motor and smoke it. So we need to control that. And then 
Blue Jay decides to, to go sort of for full talk a bit sooner than BL Hell Yes, so that steps up. We get the full talk for a while, and then a step down in talk back to a similar level to what we had at the start here. And then another step down to this sort of uh, characteristic curve that we would expect. So it'll be interesting to see what might cause those three steps. And uh, if anything can be done to smooth things out, particularly in the latter half here, where we, we probably don't want to, to have quantized steps in talk. Um, you know, once we get up to 15,000 RPM, we'd like something a little bit smoother, um, like what BL Hell yes does. We do see that Blue Jay is going to be a, a little bit more responsive than BL Hell yes, because we do get a lot more area under the, the torque curve with Blue Jay. And that area under the curve is really a measure of the, um, the power that the motor is able to output as it accelerates a flywheel. So now let's look at the current consumption for these runs. And we can see that both BLHLES and Blue Jay have a sort of smooth ramp up in current up to about 10,000 RPM, which is about when the, the torque curves peak. And then a nice gradual smooth decay in current consumption as the RPMs build to 20,000 RPM. What you're seeing down here, these gradual ramps up in current, is all to do with your ramp up power setting. So for doing these flywheel type tests, I have to set the ramp up power pretty low um, to avoid the, the ESC just desyncing because of the, the load. And so that low ramp up power setting is responsible for this smooth increase in current consumption up to about 10,000 RPM. And once we get to 10,000 RPM, we're at the maximum power for that throttle setting. So in this case, 50%. And then the decrease in current is all to do with the increasing RPM of the motor building back EMF, which uh, reduces the amount of current that the, the motor windings draw as the, as the ESC drives them. All right, so what conclusions can we draw from this test data? Well, let's start by talking about the 32-bit firmwares. So that's BL Heli 32, AM32, and FETTEC. Out of those three, I think AM32 is still performing the best for me. It's delivering the most torque over the largest RPM range, which is what we're looking for to get the maximum performance out of the motor. And it's not drawing massively more current to do that, and it, it's not drawing any more current at low RPMs so there's no additional risk of, of smoking motors or anything like that for the extra performance that you're getting. FETTEC is also doing really, really well. It's interesting that a lot of the protections which make it difficult to do a full bore inertial dyno test on the FETTEC ESC may be helpful in preventing you smoking your motors in a multi-rotor application. I mean, the fact that it just refuses to drive a motor if there is too much load on it um, could definitely be seen as a benefit. Looking at BL Heli 32, I'm really excited to see how quickly the devs have been able to identify the cause of that low and variable torque at relatively low RPMs and address that in the test code. They have already bridged the majority of the gap between BL Heli 32.9 and AM32 with this new test code. And that's fantastic to see. And I'm so optimistic that we will be able to even further improve the performance of BL Heli 32 now that we can test the ESC firmware in this way and produce these curves and see the effect of tweaking different settings. So I'm going to be continuing to focus on that. And if you want to follow along, there's a link to the GitHub repo um, down in the video description and to the issue where, uh, where we're working through all this stuff. So let's talk now about the 8-bit firmwares, BL Heli S and Blue J. For me, Blue Jay is the performance winner here. It's generating more torque over more of the RPM range, and it's doing that without consuming any more current. So there's no downside. The ESC is just being more efficient. It's generating more torque with the same amount of current. It does have that very steppy torque response curve, those three steps, which is really interesting to see. Um, I wonder if anything can be done to smooth that out. I'm going to raise an issue on the GitHub and we'll, we'll see what the response is. Um, but it's really interesting to see. If it can be smoothed out, that's only going to improve things in terms of performance. If you're interested in following along, there are going to be links down in the video description to the GitHub 
and I'll probably do a follow-up video on this uh, once everything has kind of shaken out and we've gone through all of the steps um, and got all these firmwares to the, the best place that they possibly can be. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that follow-up video um, to know what versions of ESC firmware you should be on to make sure you're getting the best performance. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support future test work like this to continue to improve the performance of our FPV quads, then please consider joining me on Patreon. You can sign up from just a few dollars a month and you'll get access to a special area of my Discord server where there's extra information on existing and upcoming AOS frames, as well as some sneak peeks of projects that I'm working on. If a monthly subscription isn't for you, then I also have a buy me a coffee where you can chuck a few bucks my way just to say thank you for a, a video or a piece of work that I've done. There are links to both of those down in the video description. I'd really appreciate it if you consider checking them out. That's all that I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.